Good morning, Bowser. It's time for our morning announcements. I'm Kennedy. And I'm Kenja. And we're your anchors for BTV. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Today is Thursday, October 8th. Today's lunch menu is possible with meat sauce and garlic toast, corn dog, BLT chef salad with eggs, ham, turkey, and cheese bagel, green beans, baked potato wedges. In national news, seven Syrian refugees were rescued from the Mediterranean Sea on Tuesday. While trying to swim from a boat to the UK, they were rescued by the French from a 21-mile swim in the freezing water. When they arrived in the hospital, four of them had hypothermia, but thankfully they all recovered. Because of the growing refugee crisis in Europe, resulting from the S Syrian civil war, the United States is increasing the number of refugees it accepts from 70,000 to 100,000 by the year 2017. As of right now, about 1,500 refugees have resettled in the U.S. since the civil war began in March of 2011. Organizations are preparing for an increase in those numbers as the war in Syria drags on. A Voice of America reporter gives us the latest from Chicago. Mm. Asmat Khalil Dado had a good life in Aleppo, Syria. He says his job as a bus driver provided well for his family of six. All of that changed when war came to his doorstep four years ago. Uh, and there, was, there were planes that were dropping bombs, uh, helicopters that were dropping barrel bombs every day, and we didn't know where uh, the disaster would come or the crisis would, uh, and how the crisis will end. <laughs> So the Dado family did what millions of Syrians have done since the war in their country began. They fled the turmoil with nothing but the clothes on their backs and what they could carry with them. We really had no choice, and, and that decision was the hardest decision that we had to make. We knew if we left, we would never be able to go back. His request for asylum eventually brought him to Illinois, where they are among 16 Syrian refugee families resettled so far this year. Chicago is a hub for many refugees. Uh, and, uh, usually in a typical year, uh, Illinois will accept about 2,000 refugees. Suzanne Akras is the director of the Syrian Community Network, a new organization helping Syrian refugees integrate into new communities. There's so many refugees that come here that don't have this community support and, and, and this isolation really is the worst thing that for a refugee to, to feel. Akras believes many of the 2,000 refugees coming to Illinois next year will be Syrian. I believe that we uh, as, as Americans um, have big hearts and we want to help Syrian refugees uh, to come here and to resettle. But not every American shares her views. I'm putting the people on notice that are coming here from Syria as part of this mass migration that if I win, if I win, they're going back. They're going back. I'm telling you. Despite the issue being prominent on the presidential campaign trail, Dado doesn't have a home to go back to, and he is weary from years of being on the move. And people need to have some time to rest from war. They need to have some peace. They need to be able to raise their families, to, be, uh, to live a normal life, to do homework, to go to school, to be able to find a job. All important aspects of a normal family life, Asmat Dado and his family have now found in the small but growing Syrian refugee community in Chicago. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Chicago, Illinois. And now to Takarius with the sports and weather update. So Maya, do you think your team worked well together? A lot of the times we did, but then sometimes we just needed to like work on it. What were your goals for this season? Uh, to have fun and win a lot of games and just work together well. Why did you start? It was just something to do, but then I kind of grew to like it a lot. <laughs> How long have you played? This is my first year of volleyball. What position do you play? Outside, mostly. 
Well, congratulations on finding a new sport that you enjoy, and have a great day, Bruins. Thank you, Dakarius and Haley. Interesting fact. Babies born on February 1st, January 1st are said to be the luckiest people throughout their lives. Today is National Poetry Day. Take time to read a poem today. Joke of the day. What did the horse say when he tripped and fell down? What? Help, I've fallen and I can't giddy up. <laughs> now to Mr. Harsha with the rest of your morning announcements. Have, Have a, a great, great rest of your day, day Belzer. Belzer. Good morning, Bruins. Uh, a couple things I wanted to cover today. A few are just some kind of housekeeping uh, tips. First, I know Box Top Collection has been going on for quite a while for our PFO. Remember, that is for a good cause. If you have box tops at home, please gather them up, go through the pantry, tear those little box tops off of cereal boxes and other foods, and bring those into your college prep teacher tomorrow. Tomorrow is the final day for that collection. A member from the PFO will be picking those up at the end of the day tomorrow. Um, and you can send those down to the main office to be put in the big blue bin. Remember, the college prep class that collects the most will receive donuts from Tim's Donuts in McCordsville when we get back from break. So continue to uh, get those box tops in. Secondly, I've gotten some questions today about reading logs. I know today is Thursday and typically a day for silent reading, but we have some other things we need to go over. I do want to make sure everybody understands that when we come back from fall break on that Tuesday, which is the 20th, we will still be collecting reading logs on that day. So over your break, please find time. You can do it over uh, the next couple days, over the weekend, or over your week off in the car if you're traveling, etc. But we will still have a reading log collection on the 20th, and I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. Um, Canvas. Yesterday, um, we kind of wrapped up our month-long commitment to educating all of our students and staff here about bullying. And um, yesterday you had an opportunity to go over some review on all of the information that Mr. Landers and Ms. Neal and students have shared throughout the month. Right now, available on Canvas, and I, I shouldn't have said right now, here in a few minutes when I'm done, uh, please understand that the assignment will be open in Canvas. It was sent to all of you by Ms. Neal, and there is a 10-point assignment or quiz. And basically what that's going to tell me is that you followed along, you understand the um, incidents and the issues revolved around bullying, and you're going to demonstrate that to me through this short quiz. Please take the quiz seriously uh, and uh, make sure that you get those done. The quiz should be open here this morning. It'll be open all the way through tomorrow afternoon. So today during college prep, tomorrow during college prep, or any free time that you have throughout the next two days, please make sure you get that quiz done. Also want to make sure everybody understands the Monday we return from fall break is parent-teacher conference day. That means your parents have an opportunity to come in from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and meet with your teachers. Okay, that information will go home on our Sunday night call. The information will be put up on our website. And if your parents have any questions, they can reach out to me or your teachers um, to get those answered. But we really would like to see a lot of parents come in and take advantage of that time to meet with teachers. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a turn here and just go over some reminders. Every day that I'm in this building, I stand out in the hallway, mostly down here by the front door in the T of our 7th grade hallway. But I've had some really great conversations this week with staff members, with IAs, with counselors, with administrators, and even with some students about the behaviors that we've been noticing in our hallways here. I'm sure that everyone is very clear on our expectations. Okay? First and foremost is that we are always walking. This is a school. We have 1,176 students all trying to get somewhere in five minutes. And I understand some of you have a sense of urgency and you feel the need to run so that you're not tardy. Please understand that if you move quickly and you stay to the right and everybody participates, we can get you to class in five minutes. Please do not run. You'll notice in our hallways we have a red stripe right down the middle of the hallway. And again, we're going to encourage everybody to stay to the right. Seems silly. Seems like we're trying to be too controlling, but understand, again, it's just like on the roads, okay? If traffic on the roads were able to ride on left or right side, there would be accidents, and sometimes we have accidents here at Belzer. Stay on the right side of the hallway and keep moving. And then the third thing that I want to address is just the volume level. I know that five-minute passing period is your time to let go a little bit. You're not sitting in class. You have some time to socialize with your friends, but the screaming and the yelling and the loud screaming is just not appropriate for school. 
I have asked staff members in this building if they see students doing any of these things that are against my expectations for you to please address it. So understand, if you don't want staff members to be bugging you in the hallway during your five minute classing period, walk, stay to the right, keep your hands to yourselves and keep your volume at, a, at an appropriate level and everything will be just fine. I also want to talk about the cafeteria. Overall behavior in the cafeteria has been great. The only thing that I have concerns with right now are two things. Number one, making sure that students are staying in their seat. If you go up and get your food, come down and sit at your table, have some great conversation with your classmates, share some laughs, but please stay seated unless you are given permission by an administrator in there to go to the restroom or anything else. Um, and please, again, as far as volume, I know that's lunchtime and there's a couple hundred of you in there, but please try to keep your voice um, at an appropriate inside level so that when the counselor or the administrator need to talk to you, you can hear the information that they're sharing. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about classroom. I have been in a lot of classrooms over the last couple weeks. And there's two things that I want to ask every student in this school to do, and I want to make it sure that it's coming very clear for me. And guys, both of them are very easy. Number one, when you are in a classroom in this school, I expect you to be nice. Nice to each other, nice to your teacher. That's a simple expectation, and everybody has the ability to do it. It's just a choice. The second expectation is that you try. Okay? I found far too many students who have their computer shut, their folders shut, the rest of the class is working, the teacher is instructing, and students are just sitting there, or they have their head down. Okay? Our teachers in this building work very, very hard to keep you engaged and to make sure that you are learning. And it's difficult for them to do that when you're not willing to give a little bit of effort. So in review, students, in the classroom, I expect you to be nice and to try. And if we can all do that, we're going to have a great year. Thank you for listening to my long message today. Uh, have a great day. Remember that report cards will be delivered tomorrow during college prep, and you'll get an excellent opportunity to see where you're at after the first grading period. Have a good day.